Hey, this is Ryan. I'm the head of the Proxy Network support team here with a video tutorial that demonstrates how members of your help desk can use Proxy to provide remote access or remote support. So, first thing we're going to want to do is open up a web browser and visit the URL for your Proxy web console. Now, this is our web console here, so your address might look more like https colon whack whack proxy dot company name dot com. Anyways, once you get to your landing page, we're going to log yourself in. Click on the Find a Desktop button to do that. And once we get logged in, we're taken to the Home tab, which presents you with a list of available hosts. So note the All Host group and the drop down here. The All Host group is the catch-all bucket that always contains and displays all of your available host machines here, although you might have yours organized by location or business unit. Um, anyways, so to connect to a machine, if that's not listed on the home page here, you might make use of the Find Host feature, so you can begin typing out the name of a machine that you want to get connected to. Click on Search. It'll find my J. Smith PC, and let's connect. So I'm going to hit the Quick Connect button here, and we're in. So there's a few things we can do during a connection here, and I want to point out the common controls that you might use during a connection. So at the top left, you're going to notice a mouse icon. This means when it's pressed inward, you're in control, you're driving. And if you press on the sunglasses here, you'll enter view only mode. So you're in look but don't touch mode, so you don't disturb the end user's keyboard or mouse. To the right of that, we have our automatic clipboard sharing button. So when you click this, you're able to copy and paste text in and out of the machine you're connected to. And then to the right of that, you'll have some send keystroke functions here. So click on this to send a control out delete to lock the screen or to log into Windows. To the right of that, we have our chat button here. And you can use this to chat back and forth with the end user. And last, we have our screen sizing options. So we have our fit one to one button here, which is what I'm in now. And then fit to window allows us to grab the edge of the connection window and shrink it down or blow it up and allow you to make the connection window sized up your way. And then the leftmost one is the full screen button, which will blow it up to the, uh, to the fit the whole screen. So that covers the connection controls at the top. Uh, a couple more things we can do at the bottom. Aside from remote control, we can do file transfer. So on the file transfer tab here, we can obviously transfer files from one side to the other. The left side represents my file system on the left, and the right side represents the remote machine's file system. So navigate to where you'd like to be, and then you can just literally drag and drop from one side to the other. And the last tab here is remote management. This lets you do a number of things behind the scenes without interrupting the end user. And while I won't cover everything on this video, I'll show you the fun stuff. So let me start with the service manager here. If I click on services, it'll give us a list of services on the machine. And if I right click, I can start, stop, or restart services. Next on the list is our process manager. And this will give you a list of all the running processes on the machine, as if you were to pull them up in the task manager. And to kill a process, right click and kill. And next on the list, we have our remote registry editor. So to use this, we'll expand registry editor on the left and navigate to where you'd like to be. And on the right pane, we can right click to add, modify, or delete registry keys here. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is our event viewer manager. So you can pull up the Windows event viewer logs here if you're connected to somebody who might not be able to articulate the problem they're running into. So you can see what Windows had to say about the particular problem. And with that, I think I've covered the majority of things that would be necessary for you to be able to use Proxy on a day-to-day -day basis. Feel free to contact us at proxynetworks.com for any questions. Thank you for watching.